Problem 3 of Larson and Gray Chapter 2 gives us a good opportunity to get some practice with the NPV calculation. What I've done here is copied out the formula for, that was given to you in Chapter 2 and then a simple problem which is problem 3. We first look at the formula. Notice that the NPV it starts with IO. What's that? That's the out-of-pocket initial investment that you make in the project. <clears throat> this, uh, the rest of the formula plus the sum of, that's what this little sideways M means, the sum of the future cash flows. But you can't just look at future, future cash flows. You also have to discount them or divide future incoming cash flows uh, by the, uh, either the project required return rate or the company's weighted average cost of capital or the interest rate that you're given by your CFO or interest plus risk, uh, interest rate that was given to your project to factor in the risk of a project. There's a lot of different uh, theories associated with what interest rate you should choose. But in any case, the main point is you cannot just consider cash flows coming in in the future. You have to discount them to the present depending by, on how many periods out the cash flow comes in and what the underlying interest rate is. And the reason is there's a time value of money. A money, uh, money in your pocket today is worth more than money coming in tomorrow, especially, for example, if you're expecting it from your brother-in-law. So let's take a look at how we would set up this project. Uh, first of all, uh, sorry, this, this NPV analysis. We look at uh, number three here. It says we have a net cash flow of 15000 25000 30000 20000 and 2015 over the next five years. So let's just set up a little spreadsheet up here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. That's the next five years. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, center these columns, make it look nice. So that's the next five years. And what do we have? We've got uh, 15,000, 25,000, 30,000, uh, another 20,000, and finally 15,000. That's over the next five years. All right, now what is the given interest rate? It's the required rate of the return is what's given to you is the interest rate to be used for that uh, this project. Okay, so uh, notice this is 20%, but the formula is one plus K. So that's one plus the interest rate expressed as a percent, and T is the period. First period would be one, the second period would be two. Okay, so uh, let's do this. I'll set up a formula equals 1.2, and 1 1.2 to the first power is just 1.2. Okay, so we got that. The next one is equals 1.2. This is raised to the second power because it's the second period. You see t in the formula and t equals 2 in period 2, so 1.2 squared. Okay, the next one is equal 1.2 raised to the third power, that's 1.2 cubed. The next one is equal to 1, well, the parentheses, 1.2 raised to the fourth power. And here you have equals 1.2 the fifth power. All right. Okay, so uh, notice the number gets bigger and bigger and bigger the further out you go because it's raised to a higher power. But since you're dividing the incoming money by a bigger and bigger number, the number that comes in in the future is actually smaller. So let's, let's do this. We're going to take the number and we're going to divide it by this interest rate raised to the t power based on this formula. So that's uh, row 10 and row 11. So we have equal L10 divided by L11. So um, let me copy this formula and paste it throughout. All right, so notice that since we have uh, a one-year interest rate of 20%, uh, and we discount to the present, that's actually 12500 Another way to interpret this is if I had 12500 and I put it in the bank one year from now, that would be worth 15000 
Okay, uh, 25,000 is discounted by 1.44. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and change these to currencies. You go to Format Cell, Currency, there you have it. And I'm going to change that to currency. We don't need to do the middle one because uh, those are just multipliers. Okay. Now, this formula says you take uh, the sum of uh, cash flows divided by 1 plus k to the t. So, let's take the sum. You just scroll sideways, hit auto sum, and there you have it. That is the sum of the cash flows. All right, now, what was the initial investment? The initial investment was 50000 all right, so I'm going to just put uh, I.O. for initial investment, just like the I.O. in the formula. And I'm going to uh, put this as minus 50,000, because 50,000 is going out. And you're going to balance that against coming in, uh, what's coming in. So format cells, put that as a currency. Um, You've spent fifty thousand uh dollars. Oh, that says five hundred thousand. One too many zeros. Okay, so fifty thousand goes out. Now uh, let's understand where the word net present value comes from. First of all, the present value today of five years worth of cash flows discounted at an annual twenty percent rate is sixty two thousand eight hundred ninety five. That's the present value. Well, we don't want the present value, we want the net present value. That means you're netting out what's the, uh, the present value of future cash flows against what you spent today to invest in the project. So to net that out, we take this and we add it to this. So that would be Q10, sorry, Q12 uh, plus K12 equal Q12 plus K12. And that is $12,895.45. Uh, All right, so some rules about interpreting the NPV. If the NPV is positive, that means you made more money than you could have made in an alternative financial instrument, such as the bank. If it is uh, zero, that means what you make is exactly the same as what you would earn from an alternative financial instrument, such as the bank. If it's negative, you're making less than what you sh would make in an alternative financial instrument, such as a bank. So this says this project is going to return $12,895, which that sounds pretty good, especially since the discount rate chosen is 20%. Why would you have a rate like 20% when interest rates are so low? That's like credit card interest. Well, maybe it's because it's a high-risk project, and this is one way that uh, companies factor in risk. The higher the risk of the project, the higher the discount rate, which is effectively the higher the hurdle rate you have to achieve in order to uh, be profitable. Uh, so that's a summary of how you applied this formula. Here's a simple example of the net present value and you could see based on this net present value it's probably a good investment. Again, if, if, if in uh, K14 uh, if you had gotten zero or a negative number it's probably safer to just put your money in a bank rather than this project because you'd have less risk uh, here you're getting compensated for a lot of risk because you're getting far over and above the 20 percent annual rate so that's a simple overview of the net present value